Hi there, welcome to another edition of the Petty Podcast. This is your host, Stephen Petty. Today's presentation is going to be on the fact that we're starting to see some truth come out from our public health officials, especially especially regarding masks and the so-called dummy dots, those six-foot dots that we are supposed to protect us from one another. I title this Lies, Lies, and You Know What Lies. So what's come out? On January 2nd, 2022, which is pretty recently, uh, Scott Gottlieb, former FDA chief, said on CBS's Face the Nation um, that basically a cloth mask is not going to protect you from the airborne virus. Um, specifically, he was on the show and he was asked by the host, Brennan, what do you tell parents uh, are, aren't cloth masks g- uh, good anymore? This was his response. Cloth masks aren't going to provide a lot of protection. That's the bottom line. This is an airborne illness. We now understand that. Of course, we've understood that for a long time. And a cloth mask is not going to protect you from virus that spreads through airborne transmission. It could protect against droplet transmission, something like the flu, but not this coronavirus. Well, we've heard that droplet argument before from CDC, and we know that over 99% of the particles are aerosols or less than 5 microns. So... We're not going to get fooled by that droplet argument anymore. That's really aerosols. So the the truth is leaking out. Cloth masks will not protect you from viruses like COVID, which are small, and the masks might stop bigger droplets, but they're a small fraction of the problem, and they fall right to the floor, they don't stay suspended, and they don't reach deep into the lung. And we've known this for decades. I mean, we've known it from flu and from using... um, masks in hospital settings that they don't stop infectious diseases. The other thing that was that just came out was a January 2022 uh, report from uh, England Department of Education uh, suggesting the masks don't seem to work. And the BBC headline uh, was, the government admits that evidence for using masks in schools to reduce the spread of COVID is inconclusive meaning they can't prove that it works or don't work. Um, And what did they do? They looked at 123 schools where masks were used, and they compared that to others where they weren't used. And this is the title page of that particular report. Um, And what did they do? It was a little different study. What they did was they they, uh, started the study in uh, October of 2021. And what they looked at was um, the reduction time in absences um, related to schools where masks were worn and they weren't worn. And they found a reduction in time for the people that wore masks of 2.3 points or percentage points and in schools where they didn't use them of 1.7. But the key statement is that those differences are not statistically significant, meaning that they couldn't prove masks made a difference in terms of absentee rates. The other thing that was really interesting in this paper, and I've touched on it in other podcasts, but I want to bring it forward again, is that masks are harmful, actually, to children. They they note that uh, 94% of the secondary leaders and teachers thought that wearing face coverings had made communication between teachers and students more difficult, and 59% said it made it a lot more difficult. And they noted that the wearing of the face coverings has physical side effects, we've talked about those, impairs facial identification, impacts verbal and nonverbal communication between the teacher and the learner. They also said that the inability to see facial expressions and read lips has a major impact on speech understanding for those with hearing impairments. The worse the hearing, the worse the impact of wearing a mask. And that uh, concealing the speaker's lips results in lower performance, lower confidence scores, increased perceived effect um, on the behalf of the listener. So, again, these harmful effects are leaking out as more and more work's being done to look at the negative impacts, if you will, on learning in schools. 
the English guidance is a little bit different from over here. Interestingly enough, they their guidance says that uh, children under age 11 should be exempt from the requirements of wearing face coverings. So nobody under 11, uh, including education. And they do not uh, recommend face coverings for anybody under age 3 um, for health and safety reasons. An interesting comment. Um, although what's interesting is uh, despite this lack of science-based evidence, we still had the chief medical advisor for the UK uh, Health and Safety Agency, Susan Hopkins, say, we support them reintroducing face masks. This is with the new COVID stuff. So never mind the science, we still want to put those face masks on our kids. And uh, my comment is, shouldn't this be done by an industrial hygienist rather than uh, somebody who's a medical advisor? who probably doesn't really have any health and safety background, or not very much. I also want to touch uh, base with you on uh, the so-called dummy dots. Uh, this is in my earlier podcast where I've stated over and over again that I could never find a basis for the six-foot rule. And uh, CDC has constantly changed their uh, defense of that six-foot rule, and I'll show you some of the things that they've done. But again, our good friend Scott, Lieb, Scott Gottlieb here, uh, back in October, uh, October or September 19th actually said something uh, interesting. Uh, basically said nobody knows where this came from, and of course this is consistent with what I've been saying on my podcast and to others privately for over a year and a half. I can't find the science that defends that number. <clears throat> and he he says, quote unquote, nobody knows where this came from. Most people assume the six foot distance, the recommendation for keeping six feet apart, comes from some old studies related to the flu where the droplets didn't flow more than, uh, fall more than six feet away. And he made a very interesting comment. When you think about all the spacing and all the, you know, the dots and the lines and everything that are put in stores and everywhere to keep people separated, he says the six-foot rule is probably the single costliest recommendation that CDC made. The whole thing feels arbitrary and is not science-based. Now, I know um, some of the criticism on the Internet about Gottlieb as well. He worked for the former president, so, you know, he's, he's a right-wing zealot or whatever. But um, I suspect that he's telling the truth. I, I do want to share with you, just to, to be complete, a little bit of the history on the six-foot rule or what one might go back and look to see if there are any rules, period. The WHO had a three-foot rule for decades. It was based on uh, 1930s work by William Wells out of Harvard, and he was studying tuberculosis and found that droplets, bits of spit, mucus, spatum, phlegm, emitted when he breathed, coughed, or sneezed, tended to land within three feet of where it was expelled. Again, these are droplets, not aerosols. So that we didn't have a six-foot rule, and, and uh, we didn't have a three-foot rule at the time. Now, recall that the six-foot rule came into play uh, at CDC. It's, it's been there for a long time. Then in August of this year, they, they cited this paper defending the six-foot rule. And then most recently, and I won't go into it because of the length of the podcast, they've gone back to a three-foot rule. But, of course, you don't see three-foot markers in stores. In fact, you don't see hardly any markers anymore at all. Um, so they cited a paper by Lou et al. on the basis for this six-foot rule. Um, and so I thought it'd be interesting to look at that actual study because I think you'll see that it doesn't ha when I did a word search of this document, I never found anything referencing six feet in any of the papers. In fact, it's all in metric. Here's a picture of the situation that they described real quickly. They had in the yellow dot, a sick individual sitting around a table. This was in like a restaurant or eatery and they had other people <clears throat> around the table and then in adjacent tables. And this space is a total of about 5 meters by 6 meters, or about 16 feet by 20 feet. And the circles where there are red circles around uh, the uh, designated individuals are people that got sick as a result of being next to A A1. And what's curious is that the people that got sick were uh, within 6 feet, but they were also much further than 6 feet, almost 10 to 12 feet away. And what's really curious about this is if you look on the right, you'll see that the air conditioning system with its arrows pointing towards the space would be, you would think, blowing the air, if you will, away from A1, and yet somebody at C2 and C1 got sick. So 
First of all, there's no reference. In fact, this is all in metrics. So there's no reference to six feet in this study. And secondly, it certainly doesn't show six feet have anything to do with infection rates. And I would argue, as you read the details of the paper, it has a lot to do with the lack of appropriate ventilation. Um, what's interesting is that uh, there was some work done by folks at MIT that uh, also looked into this this last summer. Um, and I just cite a little bit of their work. They said specifically that the six-foot rule, a guideline that offers little protection from pathogen-bearing aerosol droplets, aerosols. And above all, our study makes clear the inadequacy of the six-foot rule in mitigating indoor airborne disease transmission. So there has been some work done looking at the six-foot rule. It says it doesn't work, uh, work out of MIT. And uh, in all of my reviews in the last probably 12 to 16 months, I've never found justification for the six-foot rule, and to this day it doesn't exist, to my knowledge. So it was refreshing to see Scott Lieb, Gottlieb say, well, we, we basically made it up. Didn't have any basis in science. Again, the key solution, and, and what I've said over and over again, is the real key to actually controlling exposures is to use, uh, to use engineering controls of dilution and destruction, and we've talked about that at length. Hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Feel free to call or write me if you disagree or have criticisms or even comments. Take care. Have a great day.